Now, for the weird one. The one that will destroy generations, worlds, in fact. This is the concave lens. Now really, it's not terribly difficult. I'm, I'm being way more aggressive than I should be with this. Okay, it's not terrible. Um, it's just like the other stuff. We draw our baseline. Nothing fancy there. Let's see if we can get right smack down in the middle. Last time we didn't, and it made our drawing look great. By great, I mean horrible. Now, from here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to make it a, a virtual focal point. A virtual focal point. One. Okay? And that is going to be at negative 10 on both sides. Okay? Now you're saying to yourself, virtual focal point, what's the big deal? Why does it matter? Virtual focal point means that when we draw our lines, it's going to be ever so slightly different than when we drew our lines on the last ones. Okay? So here's F right here. There's F. There's F right there. There's a the left one. There's the right one. And then here's our object. We'll make it a candle again. Imagine that. It's a candle. Fascinating. Okay, there. Now, here comes the fun part. Okay? The first line is always the same. It always does exactly the same thing. Of course, I drew my candle too big. Give me a break. And look how big this concave lens just got. What? It's crazy. Okay. All right. First line. Parallel to the baseline. There's line one. Nice. It went into the lens like we wanted it to. Now, usually, this is where we would draw a line that would go to the right-hand focal point. But because it is a virtual focal point, because it's a concave lens, we have to use the other instead. Okay, and the reason we know this, the reason we know that this is the case, is because with a concave lens, the lines diverge when they exit the lens. Okay, so that means that if it goes through and converges, that means it's not that type of lens anymore. Okay, this type of lens diverges lines. It makes them go away from the virtual focal point. So there we go. Parallel in, away from virtual focal point. If we were to continue drawing parallel lines, they would all go away. From the virtual focal point. Down here, same thing. It would come down, go away from the virtual focal point. All right, now for the second line, that's one, that's our one. For the second line, we're going to draw a line not to this focal point, but to the one on the right hand side. Okay? And the reason we're doing it to the right hand side is the same reason why we used this one in the first round. Okay? We're using the opposite of what we would do because it is a concave lens. So we're going to draw towards this guy. Now, as you know, we're going to hit the lens, and at that point, it changes direction, so it's not going to find its way all the way to F. Now, this particular one, if you come in towards a focal point, it always goes out flat. So, that means it's going to go parallel to the baseline. There's line two. This is line R2. Now, the two lines we care about to see what happens to them are R1 and R2. Looks like R1 and R2 do not meet in the real world. They diverge from one another. That's why this is called a diverging lens. So that means we need to draw back into the virtual world. We've already done that with this one because I wanted to make sure I lined it up right. That means we just need to draw back R2 into the virtual world. Alright. Now, where line R1 and R2 meet is your image. Looks like it's right about her. There's the top of your candle, bottom of the candle's on the baseline as always. All right, now let me verify one thing real quick. Okay, so P, in this case, we had P equal 20. We had F equal 10 centimeters. But because it is a virtual focal point, it is negative. All right, Q equals the grand question mark. 1 over P plus 1 over Q. Equals. Whatever. Alright. So with this in mind, we move to the other side. Okay. 1 over P. P was 20 of them. Plus 1 over Q. Equals 1 over, remember, negative 10. Alright. Just like before, the mathematics is the same. Minus 1 over 20. Wow, it's really far below that. Okay. Minus 1 over 20. 1 over Q. Equals 1 over 10. Negative. 
minus 1 over 20. Now the astute observer will know that this looks very similar to the first one that we did here a couple times ago. So the least common denominator is 20. That means we need to multiply this whole side by 2 over 2. So 1 over Q equals 2 times 1, which is negative 2, over 2 times 10, which is 20, minus 1 over 20. 2 twentieths, negative, minus 1 more, negative 20th, equals, you guessed it, 3 over 20. Negative, 1 over Q. So at this point, we do the old flip a flip a flip a flip a flip a flip a We do the reciprocal. Q equals 20 of them over 3, still negative. Okay, at this point, you divide 20 divided by 3 to find an actual decimal number. If you want to keep it as 20 thirds, I suppose that's fine. But we find out that it's 6.6. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7. Okay, so at this point now we do the magnification. We found our Q. So negative Q over P equals negative, negative 6.6666666666666 over 7, over 20 centimeters. Centimeters cancel. We are left with a magnification of, you guessed it, 0 0.3333333333333333333. Three. Now, let's see how close we got. All right, our image was supposed to be at, oh, I forgot, 6.6666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666